Tilsley. Um, I am a pastor, retired, up here in Grand County. And today I'm sharing in the service um, because Paula has an unrelated COVID um, illness right now. So she is taking care of herself and healing and we pray for Paula um, and that she'll be back with us soon. Um, so I'm gonna be sharing a little bit about Outbreak of Kindness. It's a ministry we are doing up here in Grand County. Um, and it's through and, and goes out from Church of Eternal Hills. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what it is, let me just give you a little bit of a snippet, just a little bit of background. Um, right when the uh, pandemic was getting um, at its worst and things were beginning to shut down, a group of seven people came together and decided they wanted to make sure there was things in place, uh, ministries in place to help those that might get um, shut down in terms of the pandemic, couldn't get out of their houses, needed to be quarantined, uh, maybe were high risk. So we wanted to make sure that people all over the county, if they were up high in the mountains or down in some of, uh, of our towns, that they would still be able to get everything they needed. Um, food, um, toilet paper, toiletry, supplies, even um, items for their dogs and for their cats, just to make sure people could stay safe at home, but still had what they needed. Um, and so we started out trying to um, we put together a list and people could sign up either for help or to help. And within hours, the to help list was um, five times as big as the need help list. There was so many people that wanted to help. And at some point, we've already had 250 volunteers. Um, and so it was just amazing how many people across this county volunteered the minute they saw it on uh, Granby Garage and on Facebook. Um, we had outbreak of kindness volunteers ready to go um, by mid-March. Um, it has really developed in lots of things, but the part that I'm most involved with and the part that, the, that we're really focused on right now is ministry in terms of distribution, in terms of food, as I said, also toiletries, things that um, babies might need, things that the pets might need, um, some of our older members in the community, things that they might need. Um, and you'll hear a little bit about those stories later on in the service, some specific ways that we have been able to reach out and to help and be a, a community of love and care here in Grand County. So now we are focused on serving food out to people. Um, we put boxes of food together. Um, often it's um, your basic food and staples, but we've also tried to add produce and apples and oranges and carrots and potatoes. Uh, we've been able to do a lot of frozen food in terms of chicken um, and fish and especially uh, desired fish sticks. Um, so we've really actually um, enjoyed putting all these wonderful boxes together. And then cars come, volunteers with their cars and trucks come to Church of Eternal Hills. And then myself and other volunteers load their cars and trucks up with the boxes of food and supplies and they go out to all areas of the county, all the way up to Kremlin and Grand Lake. Um, we are currently going to Winter Park and Fraser right now, but we have has gone that way in the county too. Um, so currently people can come and get food um, in Tabernash at the Church of Eternal Hills, up in Kremlin, Grand Lake, Hot Sulphur, and um, every other Saturday at currently at 11 to 12. Um, we also, this coming Saturday, if there's anybody that wants to come and help and volunteer, um, you can call the church or you can contact us um, or just if you want to come at um, 11 o'clock on Saturday and help out. Or you can also go on our Facebook page and see all the other ways all week that we need volunteers and helpers and how you can be a part of this incredible ministry. We're very grateful for Church of Eternal Hills uh, because they provide this location, this place where we can begin and to make sure everything happens. Um, without this wonderful location with the big community fellowship hall, it would be really hard to do this ministry. So we're very grateful uh, for the from the congregation to the church to the facility. Um, so Outbreak of Kindness is a wonderful ministry um, through Grand County and especially through Church of Eternal Hills. And we're grateful for all of you who've been a part of this ministry in many ways, from shopping to donating to giving financial support to coming and boxing up. We're grateful for you and we're grateful for this ministry. Um, of outbreak of, of kindness. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King. Thank you. 
morning, children. Have you ever thought how cool it would be to sit with Jesus by a campfire and warm up your hands and your heart? How about if Jesus showed up and fixed you fish for breakfast? That might be kind of weird, but we're going to hear a story about how Jesus showed up on a lake shore and then fixed some fresh caught fish for breakfast. He sat down with Peter and had a heart-to-heart talk while they ate fish for breakfast. You know, fish are really important in the gospel story. In fact, the very first Christians who, who followed Jesus used the fish as a symbol, not a cross. They didn't have the cross as a symbol. They had a fish. And that's why I love this little cross so much. Because if you look at it one way, it's a cross. And when you look at it the other way, it's a fish. This is a cross we use for our confirmation students. And that's when young disciples grow up and say, I want to be a disciple of Jesus. And so they go through a class and they learn all about what it means to be a disciple, what it means to truly follow Jesus. You know, at the end of our gospel story today, Jesus says again to Peter, follow me. I wonder what it would be like for you to follow Jesus. I think a lot of that means listening to your uh, parents and listening to your friends at church and learning about how to share God's love with everyone you meet. A couple of weeks ago, we had a friend named Linda share a story about her life, and it made a lot of people's hearts grow really warm and really full of understanding what it means to be a disciple. And you know what? She thought that you guys might enjoy having a book from her. So if you stop by the church this week, you can pick up your worship kit if you haven't received one. And if you're out of goldfish crackers, I'll make sure you get some more. But she's going to give you a book. Um, Whatever age you are, if you're a little older, you might want this one. And if you're younger, you would like to learn about Antarctica. What a wonderful gift for Linda to give us. And what a wonderful way to share the love of Jesus just by sharing what we have with one another. Friends, I hope you remember to share everything you have. And remember that the sign for those early Christians and even for us today is the sign of a fish. A fish for those early Christians was a reminder of the miraculous catch, the way that Jesus fed the 5,000 families that were gathered on a hill to listen to him one day, and many other stories about fish. Abundance is a big word that just means you have lots and lots and lots of it. And one thing I'm sure of is that God has an abundance of love for all of us. And there's no better person to teach us about that than Jesus. So this week, spend some time learning more stories about Jesus. Ask your parents to tell you the story of the time when a little boy brought his lunch to share for the 5,000 people. You will be amazed. I am so glad you joined us this morning, and I hope you enjoy your time coloring pages to bring to us at the church, and I hope you remember to write a note to someone special, maybe send a picture in the mail. Let's have a little prayer about what it means to be a disciple. Dear God, help me follow you. Let's do this part together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, I'm Reverend Sandra Tilsley, and I'm a volunteer here with Outbreak of Kindness, uh, which is a ministry that comes out of Church of Eternal Hills here in Tabernash, Colorado. Um, Outbreak of Kindness started when the pandemic uh, started and when the shutdown happened back in March. And ever since then, we have been able to put food boxes together and send them out to our neighbors and community members all around Grand County. And we're grateful for all of you who bring food so this can happen. Um, I'd like to tell you some stories of what has happened through this amazing ministry 
Um, and one of those stories is that we have um, two families that live in a duplex. And on one side was an older woman and the other side was a younger woman. And when the state got shut down and we couldn't go out to eat, the younger woman uh, started to wonder how she was gonna cook for her family because she really hadn't done a lot of that. Um, but the older woman next door said, hey, how about if I teach you how to cook? And so they had requested when we send them boxes of food that they are identical so that the older woman who has cooked a long time can maybe take this bag of rice and teach the younger woman what to do with that bag of rice. So these boxes are identical. And so what we've seen happen with these two families is that the younger woman has grown confident in cooking and uh, providing for her family. Um, but at the set... The second thing that has happened is that these two families have become very close. They have bonded during this very difficult time where many of us have been locked down and we're locked down for weeks and weeks and many of us were lonely. And so these two families were able to bond, to encourage each other and to share meals together. One teaching the other and um, both of them learning to care for one another and build community and get to know one another on a level that they had never done before. And that was because we were able to send these boxes of food where they could share meals and share cooking tips. And uh, one of them could especially learn how to cook um, at home. So we're grateful for all who have donated this food so that we can continue not only to send out food to those who need it, but to help spread kindness and community and help others build relationships with, with one another as we all try to help each other during this pandemic. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. of God's amazing love poured out for you. Let that water sink down deep, deep into your deepest regrets. We know that water in nature finds the lowest point, so allow it to find the lowest point in your life and remind you that in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins have been forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Ah, oh, what a great feeling. What a wonderful way to start the week with our hearts full of the reminder of God's forgiveness. Instead of passing the peace to our neighbors here in the pews at Church of Eternal Hills or at the church that you typically worship at, the way that I want you to pass peace this week 
is to imagine that you are sitting in church. Look around you. Who is missing from your weekly fellowship? Who sits in front of you? Who typically sits behind you or to your left or right? And just reach out to them to share the peace of God. Let's do that together. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be One of the things that we have been doing with Outbreak of Kindness, a ministry um, through um, Church of Eternal Hills, as we, we have been asking community members to donate food. And we've had so many wonderful donations, um, a lot of financial donations, which really helps us um, buy and needed items and things to supplement what has been donated. But we've also really been blessed by all the donations of actual food that people have brought to the church um, to give to Outbreak of Kindness so that we can go on Saturdays and pass out food all the way um, from Kremlin and Hot Sulphur, Grand Lake, and all throughout the county. Um, so just last week, we put in Granby Garage um, a need that we had several items that we needed, and we put a list uh, things like tortillas. I put dessert on there because I love to send out dessert with the rest of the items. Um, we put on there that we needed pasta and pasta sauce and probably 12 items that we said we needed, including apples and oranges. And uh, when we were here getting the food ready and getting it sorted and, and preparing it to box it up to send, um, a big truck pulled up and a young man got out I'd say around 21, 22 years old, large mountain truck. And he knocked on the door and he said, I brought food. I found um, your request on Granby Garage and I wanted to help. I've never done anything like this before, but I really wanted to help others and help my community, especially during this difficult time. And I hoped I got everything that you wanted on your list. And it was, it was kind of like Christmas. He opened his truck and we just started unloading it and everything on the list, he'd got as much as he could. Apparently, he had just pulled up his truck um, to the grocery store and put as much as he possibly could get and could buy and just loaded that truck up. And because of that donation and several others last week, we had plenty of food to send out to all those that needed it last Saturday. So we're grateful for all those who, who bring a little box or fill up their truck or um, stop by to, to hand us some extra cereal so that we can pass it out. Uh, because all that food helps those in our community. Let us pray. O oh Lord, quiet those things in our hearts and minds that would keep us from hearing your word read and proclaimed. In your name we pray. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning is following last week's reading from John 21. The first part will sound quite familiar to you. It's the end of our reading from last week. If you recall, a man appeared on the shore of the Lake Tiberias and called to the disciples who had decided to go fishing uh, to cast their nets on the other side of the boat. We resume the reading at verse 9. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This was now the third time he had appeared to the disciples since the resurrection.
When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to Peter, feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be pleasing and acceptable unto you, O God. For you alone are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The last time Peter was at a charcoal fire was in the courtyard of Pilate's house on the day that Jesus was crucified. It was early morning before the sun had even begun to rise and so it was chilly and to keep himself warm as he waited the trial, a young woman approached him and said, are you not one of his followers? Peter said, not me. Two more times that morning, in that early chill, in the darkness, that stillness before dawn, Peter said twice, no, I did not know that man. I do not know that man. And as he denied Jesus that third time, the rooster crowed and the words of Jesus from the table the night before came right back to him. He said, Peter, you will deny me three times before the cock crows. <sighs> Do you imagine that that was the guilt that Peter was living with that kept him from going right out into the world and beginning to do as Jesus had called him to do, which was to bind up the brokenhearted, to heal the suffering, to share the love of God with all. Jesus had called him on a lake shore and here again he meets him and sets before him a charcoal fire. And when he appears, he doesn't condemn Peter or the other disciples for going back to what they were comfortable with. In fact, he merely says, hey, did you catch anything? And when they say no, he says, cast your nets on the other side. And boy, was that haul huge. The scripture tells us there were 153 large fish and the net was not torn. You might think that's an interesting number, but if we think back culturally, uh, the people who were writing the books, the, the writer of the Gospel of John believed that there were 153 nations in the world. So it was a powerful number. It was symbolic of the number of nations that Peter was supposed to be taking the good news out to. And yet here he was on the same lake from which he had been called the first time. I love the story so much. The charcoal fire reminds us of Peter's denial. And then we see Jesus prepare a, 
a satisfying breakfast, fresh fish, baked on a charcoal fire. He doesn't wag his finger. He doesn't scold Peter or the others for not doing what they were supposed to do. He attends to their physical needs. And then we read this touching scene. It's just Peter and Jesus, and they are at that charcoal fire again, just sitting there. And Jesus looks at Peter and says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter says, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus responds with, tend my lambs. The second time Jesus looks at Peter, looks right into his soul, and he says, Simon, do you love me? I don't know if Peter could look him right back in the eyes, but he says, yes, Lord, I love you. I think his guilt was still burdening him heavily. How could he have denied being a follower of Jesus, and yet he had done that? Maybe it was that third time that Jesus took those piercing eyes, stared straight into Peter's eyes and his soul, and he said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now the writer says Peter was offended at this point that he felt hurt because Jesus sought to ask him a third time. But I also think it was that repetition, that third time that helped him to recall that he was being given redemption for the three times he had denied Jesus. And so he said, Lord, you know everything. You know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus responded, tend my sheep. And then in an interesting, interesting moment, he says, um, when you were young, you could go and do whatever you chose to do. And yet when you are old, someone will fasten a belt around you and you will open your arms and you will go where you do not want to be led. And then the writer of John tells us that Jesus said that to explain what kind of death Peter would have. And we know that Peter was martyred for being a teacher, for being the rock, for being the one to take the word out into that world of supposedly 153 nations. But now look at us. Look at us all the way in Colorado, sitting here recalling these words and this campfire redemption. Being reminded that Jesus tends to our souls and our guilt and reminds us that we do indeed love him. And then after all of this, the gospel says, after this, Jesus said, follow me. Follow me. Peter had to decide at that point, what did it mean to follow Jesus? I think we have to ask ourselves as well, what does it mean to follow Jesus? And we remember that in the gospel stories about Jesus, Jesus never once says, worship me. But repeatedly, and with so many different characters, Jesus says, follow me. In this COVID crisis time, we have learned that it is more than just worship me because we have been kept from the worship that we so long for. We long to gather and to be together, but we have been forced into thinking, what does it mean in this time of isolation and social distancing? What does it mean to follow Jesus? What does it mean when he calls to us, Paula, do you love me? And we say, all of us, oh, 
Oh, Lord, you know everything. You know we love you. And so Jesus says, feed my sheep. Yes, in this time of crisis, it's very easy for us to remember and to even translate and understand and begin to follow Jesus by feeding his sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. Wow, is there any more literal translation for that than to actually be feeding God's sheep? In this time of the coronavirus, Grand County has had such a difficult time. We're a resort community and our resorts are closed. The people who usually work in lodging or at the resorts and those who um, have restaurant work are out of work. And one way that we've been able to actually feed God's sheep is through the expansion of our food bank with the incredible help of Outbreak of Kindness. This organization started as a crazy idea between a couple of friends of mine and has expanded to include over 225 volunteers who are all hoping to sign up to be one of the people who gets to sort groceries and package them up and then drive them out to the communities where we see the greatest need. We've recently even been able to include a Granby Jones where we see a huge need and, and we've provided translation help for those who are Spanish speaking to understand maybe proper sanitation and, and to get them the food they need. What an incredible way for us to learn how to follow Jesus rather than just worship Jesus. My prayer for all of you during this time is that you would come to understand the resurrected Lord's words to Peter. Love my lambs, tend my flock, feed my sheep, and to find out how you can do that as well. Maybe your age prohibits you from being a part of the outbreak of kindness we do have to be very cautious with the vulnerability that age provides with this crazy virus. But so many of you have given money and gift cards for groceries that enable us to serve more and more families every week. Last week, Sandra Tilsley told me that we were able to share over 80 bags and boxes of food from Winter Park all the way out to Kremling and up to Grand Lake. What an amazing ministry this has become. We offer thanks for all those volunteers and we pray that they would understand that we are a community that has open hearts, open minds, and open arms. But we also know that those in our community who have signed up to help and to share what they have with their neighbors are teaching us how to be better disciples as well. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you so much for the incredible work of all those who are doing so much to provide for one another during this time. We pray for the volunteers and for their health and that they would continue to feel the joy of learning how to serve one another. We pray thanking you for those who have so generously given of their treasure to help us to buy groceries and to help us provide for those who can't provide for themselves right now. We ask for your guidance and wisdom and discernment as each one of us seeks to follow you better. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.
We've been planning on this for over three years. And through an extensive process of visioning and seeking guidance, Church of the Eternal Hills has raised nearly a million dollars toward producing a beautiful, accessible space for additional ministry opportunities. Very important to us along the way was how we might be able to better serve our community. And so we have focused on youth, on wellness, and that spiritual connection that we can help provide for our community. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for bringing us together to break ground for what we pray will be a space that invites more and more people to seek your presence in their lives. We pray we can honor you by providing space for our community that will offer a safe and welcoming environment where we can share our belief that everyone, absolutely everyone, is a precious child of yours. To your glory now and forever. Amen. And if you'll allow me uh, the pleasure, I just want to read a psalm that is especially meaningful to us at Church of Eternal Hills. And I'll just read some portions of it from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The days of our life are 70 years or perhaps 80 if we are strong. Even then their span is only toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Satisfy us early in the morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Let your work be manifest to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. Oh, prosper the work of our hands. I'd like to offer thanks to the many professionals who have guided us in this process and who are actively working to make this vision become a reality. I'll start with Scott Munn and Rusty McGinnis of Munn Architecture. Scott walked with us for at least two years listening to our dreams and visions and even the dreams and visions of our preschool students as they imagined a new space, a new learning environment and has worked patiently through many revisions to help us find a design that was uh, to serve our congregation and our community perfectly. Thank you, Scott, for your continued support and excellence in design, and thank you, Rusty, as well. We note today the tangible absence of our good friend, Steve Sears, who spent countless hours working with Munn to come up with a final design. We send our love to Steve and Jane. Mark Bierken is here from Chilkoot's Construction, and they have guided us from the early estimating how much we would need to complete this project to becoming our general contractor. Thank you for your patience as we have had to make allowances for volunteer work and for our crazy weather and COVID issues. I'd like to introduce Philip Brinkman who has faithfully served as our project manager. He happened to retire just in time to take upon himself this incredible project. And you've been awesome and wonderful, and I cannot even imagine how many schedules you are juggling to make sure we keep work on schedule. We have some of our elders present today, Sue Perkins, Karen Conrad, and I'd like to add that um, Grand Woodworks has so gracefully offered to help us with our cabinetry. Thank you so much for that. Our clerk, Debbie Knutson, and our wonderful Susie Peterson. Lynn Adams has been our communications chair for this project, and we're so glad to have her prof professionalism on board. All right, we are happy that all of you are here and I think it's time to get digging. Oh no, I forgot. Somebody very important, our county commissioner, Merritt Linky. Thank you so much for being here today. Yes, we are so happy to be sharing this project with you. So with no more ado, let us go grab our shovels and we will break ground. It's time. Praise God from on 
done at Project 2020 for this East Wing, which will be our community life center. I wanna take you on a virtual tour so you can understand what this will look like when it is finished. This, where I'm standing now, will be the new entrance to this area, and it will have a heated slab under it and a beautiful covered porch where people can hang out and wait for the parents to pick them up. It'll also be gently sloped from our parking lot to allow for handicapped access. There'll be a lot of ground moved here, earth moved, so that it is uh, level with our entryway. Where we're standing now will be the entryway to this new place. And as I said, we'll have to move a lot of earth to get this to be ground level, but it'll be an, uh, enter into this lovely room, the gathering space where our students can drop off their backpacks and school supplies uh, before going to youth group or where uh, overnight guests can leave their ski boots and ski gear. Um, it'll be right here as you first walk in to our new beautiful space. Our gathering space will have an entry into this multi-purpose room that you're looking at right now. This wall will hold the projection screen and there will be a small stage in front of it. This area will be adaptable for chairs or tables or just wide open space. That back corner right off of the gathering space will be our new youth room. Over by the water supply, we will have the bathrooms that will be equipped with showers for our overnight guests and a laundry room as well. And over here along this wall will be our kitchen with a pass-through serving window. We really hope that this space will be used for our community and our congregation in wonderful and imaginative ways. I want to thank all the volunteers who have worked so hard to prepare this space for the excavation and all of the work that will be done down here. Paul Halra has lined up volunteers and to date they have saved us well over $2,500 on the overall cost of the project. Thank you. You may be surprised that there's nothing in here for, as you know, it's been used as the dumping grounds for the longest time. Thank you to everyone who has donated and pledged towards Project 2020, and to all of you who have given of your time and your efforts to help clear our space so that we can move into our future. I'm um, Reverend Sondra Tilsley with Outbreak of Kindness. And I want to continue to offer um, a thank you for all those volunteers that, has help, that have helped us through these last several months during the COVID-19 pandemic and um, through the shutdown. Um, even though some things have opened, we still have many people that have to stay home uh, to stay safe. Um, they are in risk groups um, that they, they need to be in their homes. So we want to continue to find ways to help those folks out. Um, and we also want to continue to find ways that we can help each other as community. Um, just recently, I had a woman show up with a box of food, and she said, um, I've been saving this box of food because I want to help somebody else, and I feel like I need the opportunity to reach out to a neighbor, and I want to thank you for giving us that opportunity. Um, it has been a joy to work with um, over uh, 250 different volunteers um, physically, uh, but also we've had many volunteers who have helped us financially. Uh, but many times when the volunteers come, if it is to drop off some food, or if it's to sort the food, if it's to box the food, if it's to pass out the food, they always thank um, the leadership of this organization saying, thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve. Thank you for giving me the chance to help my neighbor in a real and meaningful way. Um, sometimes we think on a Thursday when we're getting ready to box and sort and send by Saturday, we don't have a lot of food um, in the room sometimes and we just put the word out and within hours these tables are full again and we're able to share again. And usually when we put that out, once again we hear from people, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share what I have with others. And so we've seen many examples of people who feel like in this time of pandemic, in this time of challenge, they still want to have purpose and they still want to have a chance to love their neighbor and to be kind to one another. And so Outbreak of Kindness and this ministry of food and, and other um, essential items that we send out has been giving all of us a way to love one another in real, 
um, and sustaining ways. So thank you again for all your gifts. Today's service has been a celebration and an experience of the Ministry of Outbreak of Kindness. And um, our prayer is that it has touched your heart and your spirit and for you to feel connected to the fact that we have this ministry in Grand County um, that comes out of Church of Eternal Hills and, and the gifts of so many people coming together and being community. And I think that's one of the greatest gifts of Outbreak of Kindness that is about community. Um, it's about coming together around uh, meals and tables, uh, which is a very biblical and theological concept that we are all invited to tables of love and welcome and care. And that is what Outbreak of Kindness is. It is a place for people to feel nourished and cared about and welcome at the tables that we can bring and provide for one another. So we celebrate this community of Outbreak of Kindness and all of you who are a part of it in one way or another. And we share this blessing to go out and to be a community of love and care and radical welcome to all in this community and in this world. God bless you all and amen. I was sure by now, God, you would have reached down and wiped our tears away, stepped in and saved the day. But once again, I'll say amen, and it's still raining. And as the thunder rolls, I barely hear you whisper through the rain, and I'm with you. And as your mercy falls, I'll raise my hands and praise the God who gives and takes away. And I'll praise you in this storm. I will lift my hands for you're who you are, no matter where I am. Every tear I've cried, you hold it in your hand. You never left my side. And though my heart is torn I'll praise you in this storm I remember when I stumbled in the wind You heard my cry And you raised me up again But all my strength is gone How can I carry on? If I can't find you And as the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper through the rain And I'm with you And as your mercy falls I'll raise my hands and praise the God who gives And takes away And I'll praise you in this storm I will lift my hands For you're who you are No matter where I am And every tear I've cried You hold it in your hand You never left my side And though my heart is torn I'll praise you in this storm